Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a Minecraft server for 1.18 and onwards. However, this will work for older versions, so let's get right into it. The first thing you need to do is open the browser of your choice, so I'm going to be using Google Chrome. From here we just need to go to the website minecraft.net forward slash download. This will bring you to the download page for Minecraft, however we want to scroll down to server software and go on Java Edition Server. All we need to do is go to where it says download minecraft underscore server dot one dot eighteen dot jar and we need to press the link right here. As you can see this is going to start downloading the file server dot jar and I'll cut when this is finished downloading. From here I'd like to drag this to my desktop however I can drag this anywhere in my download folder in my documents it doesn't really matter I'm just going to be using my desktop because it's nice and easy to see. I just need to right click go to new press folder and I can call this anything I want but for the sake of the tutorial I'm just going to call it minecraft server. Now I just need to drag the server.jar into the minecraft server folder. Once I open up the folder I need to make a new text document. All I do is go to new and hit text document. I'm going to call this start.txt. Once I hit enter and open this up I need to enter some text to run the server. This can be found back on the website that I mentioned earlier. All you have to do is copy and paste this. As you can see, now I've copied and pasted it into this file. Basically what this is saying is to use the language Java. The server is going to start with this amount of RAM. It's going to have the minimum of this amount of RAM. And it's going to target this file. However, if we look in our folder, you can see that this file does not exist, it's called server.jar, so I must change this to server. Now you can tell this text document is targeting the file server.jar, however I need to change the name of this file to ensure it runs. So all I have to do is go to file, save as, I need to change the save as type to all files, and then I just change this to start.bat, bat, and then hit save. As you can see now, I have a new file start.bat. I can now safely delete the start.txt file. Now we have deleted the start.txt, we can run start.bat. However, I should warn you, before you run this, you need to install Java 17. I'll have the download link for that in the description below. Now we've opened this, as you can see, it will say a bunch of stuff. However, once this is done, we'll need to accept the end user license agreement. So as you can see, here it is. So I'm just going to left click this, right click, press edit, and as you can see it says here by changing the setting to true, you're indicating that you agree to the end user license agreement. Now I've already read this, however you can go read this yourself, I'll have it linked down below. So now all you want to do is change this to true, we can press file, and then just save. We can close this now and run this start up bad again. I've just went ahead and skipped until it was done. As you can see, it took me 28 seconds for this application to run. However, it could take you longer or shorter depending on how powerful your computer is. I can just stop the server by typing the command stop and just hit enter. You can tell that we have loads of files now in this. I'm just going to go over the server.properties file. So I'm just going to left click, right click again and press edit. And here you can see the basic rule sets for the server. You can see if PVP is allowed. You can check if a whitelist is enabled. So as an example, I'm just going to make the whitelist true. So I can just replace the word false with true. I decided I think I might just change the max amount of players on the server just so you can see. So I'm just going to change it from 20 to one player as I'm going to be the only person joining. Now we can just hit file and save this. Now, every time you want to start your server, all you have to do is run the start.bat file. You have to keep this application open the whole time when you want to play your server. So I'm just going to open this again. It should be a lot quicker this time as we're not generating the world from scratch. Now the server's open, I'm just going to quickly join on my Minecraft client. I have Minecraft 1.18 open now. So to join your server, all you have to do is go to multiplayer and I'm just going to add the server. So I'm not going to bother changing the server name as it doesn't really matter. But if you're playing on the server that is hosting it, all you have to do is give the server address zero. So as you can see when I hit done, you can see that my Minecraft server is open. 
As you see when I join this, it's not going to let me join as I'm not whitelisted. So I need to add my name to the whitelist. So I will do that now. So the file we opened earlier is basically the console. So I can enter any command. So I'm just going to whitelist space add space my username, which is kinkix. Once I hit enter, the server has told us that it's successfully added kinkix to the whitelist. So if I join the server now, I should be able to join. Now I've added myself to the whitelist, I should be able to join perfectly. As you can see, I'm now here and we can see the brand new terrain for the new Minecraft update. However, what happens if we want to let other users of our network join? We need to give them our IPv4 address. Now this is basically the address that uniquely identifies your computer on the network. So I'm going to show you how to get this address now. Now, this is very simple. All we have to do is open our command prompt and we can do this by hitting the Windows key and typing CMD and just hit enter. Now from here, all we have to type is ipconfig. This will give us a ton of useless information. However, the only thing we care about is the IPv4 address. And in my case, this is 1.92.168.1.139. So I can just copy this and then go to Minecraft. Now all I have to do is add another server and instead of using the number zero, I'm instead using the IPv4 I copied earlier. Now from here, I can just press done and it will work perfectly again for me. Now, as you can see, I can also join using this address. However, if I was on a computer that wasn't hosting the server, I would have to use this address or it would not work. I hope you find this video helpful. I'm really trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of this year, so I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next video.